Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Stone. Today we are going to be doing pendulums and we're going to work through some of the examples. All right, so we got a good variety of examples too, some of which are easy and some of which are hard. The acceleration due to gravity on the moon is one sixth that of Earth. The pendulum, the period of the pendulum of the moon is measured to be 7.6. Find the period of the pendulum on Earth. All right, so they're, they're mostly hard problems. Um, so the period formula is equal to T is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. All right, the L is going to remain constant in both of these because it doesn't tell us that, but we might be able to figure it out. So the acceleration due to gravity is 1 6 of that of the Earth. The period on the moon is 7.6. Well, let's just figure out what it would be if we plugged in for the moon. 7.6 would equal 2 pi times the square root of L. We don't know the L divided by g, but we do know that that is one-sixth of that of Earth, which would be one-sixth of 10. So we can divide 7.6 by 2 pi, 7.6 divided by 2 pi, and then you could square both sides to get rid of the square root, and that would equal L times one-sixth of 10. What is one-sixth of 10? Uh, 1.6 repeat, that's kind of annoying. And then we could square this, multiply by 1.6, and figure out that 1.6 repeat times the 7.6 squared divided by 2 pi. All of that would equal a length of approximately 2.44 meters. Okay, so once we know the length of this, if we know the length of it, then we could find the period on Earth as well, because the period on Earth would be 2 pi, Square root of the length, 2.44 meters, divided by gravity, which would be 10 meters per second squared. Uh, the meters would end up canceling out, and you would end up with a period of whatever 2 pi times this stuff is, which I'm going to scribble out. I'm going to write just 2 pi times all of that stuff, and my calculator is 3.1 seconds. So which one uh, took a little longer? Well, the moon took longer because gravity was affecting it less. So it would take a little bit longer to go up and then back down. All right, next one. Uh, and actually the last one, it just has a few different parts. So this one is a half a kilogram mass is suspended from a 40 centimeter string and creates a simple pendulum. The mass is displaced at an angle of 15 degrees from the vertical equilibrium position. Calculate the following. Now, the mass is not going to matter too much until we get to some of these other parts where we're going to want to find the tension on the string and stuff. But in general, you don't need the mass to find it. It does The amount of gravity that affects the mass is, is minimal. 40 centimeters is annoying. We're going to have to convert that into um, meters. Not that big of a deal. The displaced angle is a little annoying because in, we need to figure out some other things with that angle before we can probably keep going. All right. Frequency. All of that being said, frequency, for those of you that do not know, is one divided by the period. It is how many um, cycles, essentially, will it complete in one second. All right? So we could start by recognizing and finding the period. Well, the period would equal 2 pi square root of L divided by G. Do we know the L? 40 centimeters, hooray, um, and we know G. So we would get T is equal to 2 pi square root of L, which would be 0.4 meters, divided by um, G, which would be 10. If we do that calculation, we end up with the square root of 0.4 over 10, and then we would do times 2 pi we get a period of 1.25 seconds. Okay, so if it has a period of 1.25 seconds, how many periods would occur in the term of one second? Well, it'd be a little bit less than one period in a second. So if we did the frequency, it would be one divided by that, 1.25256, and we would get a frequency of roughly 80 hertz, 0.8 hertz which means it does 0.8 periods per second, so to speak. All right, 
Calculate the height of the pendulum above the equilibrium position, above the equilibrium position, when it reaches its maximum displacement. Also, draw a free body diagram of the situation. So, essentially what is happening here is we have the pendulum with a length of L, and we have this 15 degrees not to scale at all. This would also be L right here. Try and draw them about the same length. But at this moment, we would have a change in height. So that is what we're looking for, that change in height. All right. Well, the change in height would be relating to the 15 degrees. And if we did cosine of 15 degrees, that would equal the L, the hypotenuse of this guy. Oh, no, 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 no. It would equal, um, let's call this, let's call this X x and that would equal over l if we solve for x and x is this part right here x would equal l cosine of 15 and if that part is x and this part right here is delta x and the whole thing is l then l minus x would equal the change in x which means we can replace this x with what it is, which is L cosine of 15, and your length minus L cosine of 15 would equal the change in height. We've done this a few times on the channel, so that's why I'm going through it kind of quickly. And you could factor out an L, and you would have... Um, actually, we don't even have to factor out an L this time. Normally, we'd factor out an L. Ah, why not? That's what I normally do. 1 minus... Cosine of 15 equals the change in height or the change in x. Um, I, I guess I should just call it h. Sorry. All right, do the math there. We can plug in 0.4. 1 minus cosine of 15 would equal your change in height, which is apparently 0 0.014 according to my calculations. All right. All that in mind, your free body diagram, what is happening at that moment? Well, at that moment, you got your pendulum. You're at that max equilibrium. Here's your L. And the L is the force of tension, essentially. It's not the length of it is not the force of tension, but you would call that. It would be pointing upward right here with the force of tension. And then your force of gravity would be going down, which is mg. Okay? So... If we wanted to do this second part, which is going to help, draw a feet free body diagram of the mass at its equilibrium position, find the tension of the string at this point. Well, at its equilibrium position, this is an important aspect, at its equilibrium position, we have the force of tension pulling upward and the force of gravity pulling downward, all right? And they would be in complete polar opposites. And it would also be dictated by centripetal, for centripetal force. So the sum of all forces would equal mv squared over L. Okay? The radius of this centripetal acceleration with the pendulum would be the length of the string. All right? So mv squared over L, and that is essentially going to be giving us the sum of all forces, which would be the tension minus the force of gravity. So the tension minus the force of gravity. All right. With that in mind, you can do some substitutions here. Realize the potential energy at the beginning added with the kinetic energy at the beginning would have to equal the potential at the final with the kinetic at the final. Now we started up here. Okay, at this like maximum point. So we're thinking in terms of like, okay, it was up here and now it has moved and is down here. Okay, so we had to deal with this max height, maximum displacement to be able to deal with this stuff because the kinetic energy and the potential energy are changing. So it started with all of its kinetic energy not existing and it being all potential energy and it ended with all of its potential energy finished and its kinetic energy being like all it has left. So 
the potential in the beginning will have to equal the kinetic at the end. All right. All that being said, what is the potential at the beginning? Well, the potential at the beginning would be the mass times gravity times the change in height, which is why we did this problem up here. That would have to equal the kinetic at the final, which is just one-half mv squared. All right. So all that being said, we can solve for the velocity here because we need the velocity because we have the length. All right, so we can solve for the velocity here, and we can get multiply by, well, the masses will cancel. Multiply by 2, 2g delta h will equal velocity squared, which means the velocity would equal the square root of 2g delta h. All right. Whew. With that in mind, you can plug that in to the velocity. And when we plug that into the velocity, we'd have the mass times... Something a little ironic. Actually, let's just plug it in for velocity squared. 2g delta h is velocity squared. 2g delta h divided by L. And then, if we wanted to solve for tension, we would add the mass times gravity, and you'd get the force of tension. Find the tension on the string. If you plug all your things in from this point, if you plug in your mass, which we told you from the very beginning, the mass is like only needed for this part. The mass is 0.5. The 2 times the gravity times the change in height. Well, the change in height we found was 0 0.014. Divided by the length, which is 0.4. Plus the mass times g, which is 0.5 times 10. If you do those calculations, all of those calculations you would end up with a tension force of 5.35 newtons. All right. And then the last question, this one's a quick one. Describe the one modification that you could use to double the oscillation time or the period. Well, if you wanted to double the oscillation time, thinking of your for formula, 2, P, 2 times pi would equal L divided by the square root of G the square root of L divided by G. Well, what could you do to double it? Um, well, you, you can't change gravity, but you can change the length of the string. If you double the length of the string, would that double the, um, the amount of time it would take? And to answer that question, it would, uh, it would almost double it. I feel like it would double it, and then you would square root it. So you would need to multiply it by 4. The square root of 4 would end up doubling it. Okay, so you would have to quadruple, I believe, quadruple the length to double the period. Oh, boy, that's the worst beer ever. All right, that's going to do it for this one. Until next time, everybody, stay positive, my friends, and I will see you all then. Bye.